All right, good morning. So I'm going to give you the instructions for your lab that you're going to do today. This is really our first mechanical design lab. All right, so just uh, to let you know where all of your parts are located. So at the front of the room, in this cabinet, we have four, four kits of parts, numbered one, two, three, four. We're only going to have three groups, so you're going to use kits one, two, and three, and each group can just use just reuse the same kit uh, every week. Okay. And then, in addition to those kits, then in the back corner, we have the mounting boards that you're going to use for mounting components when you do your assembly for a lab. So you don't have to use the same one every week. But this is where you'll get them, and this is where you'll return them at the end of the lab. Okay. okay, let me first uh, mention this mounting board. All right, so uh, on many of the edges, we've got some uh, rubber molding on the edges to protect you from sharp edges. If there are edges that don't have rubber molding, that means they're in pretty good shape. Now these boards have been used for four or five years, so there might be some, some burrs on there, so you have to be careful. Uh, for instance, if somebody had, had uh, tightened a, a, a screw uh, down on the board, then it may have left a burr. So just be careful on the top and, on, uh, and bottom of the board. Okay, the boards also have feet on them to support the boards and to elevate them so there's a little bit of room underneath. So, um, so you should have these feet on there. Now there may be some labs where you might have to reposition a foot somewhere else, and that that's okay, right? So those are the those are the mounting boards. Plenty of holes. Uh, for mounting the quarter-inch uh, screws that we're going to use. All right, now in your in this kit, you should have what you need. It's going to be a container with lots of screws, washers, nuts, lock washers. There even to make it easier, we may even have some uh, some wing nuts in there, so you might even be able to do some tightening by hand. Um, and also, let me m make a comment. As you're, as you're uh, assembling components, um, you initially wouldn't, wouldn't really tighten much at all. And then when you're, when you're happy with your alignment, then you can tighten. But um, just be careful to not over-tighten uh, because we're not going to be operating under high-speed, high-stress conditions. So um, if you are someone who normally over-tightens things, then... Just ease back a little bit. Thank you. Right, so you'll have each kit will have plenty of uh, shafts. Like I said, the screws, um, hex keys, um, roller bearings, and also the mounts for the uh, pillow blocks, etc. And you'll have the belts, uh, a fan, uh, all the uh, shaft collars and couplings and keys, uh, pulleys, we'll, we'll probably just use the, uh, the pulleys for the timing belts, and you're going to have all of your gears and sprockets for the chains. Um, you, you also will have a couple of 7 16 wrenches for tightening and loosening crank handle, and also what we're going to end up needing at some times, we have some, some L brackets that you would use if you were going to mount flan and use flange mount bearings so you can mount them on something, and also each kit will have a collection of spacers. There may be times where you need to elevate the uh, bearings to some degree in order to accommodate maybe some large gears or large sprockets or large pulleys so that they have some room to spin.
Now the other comment I want to make, um, this is going to be a bit annoying, I know, but uh, the pulleys, or the, excuse me, the bearings, the roller bearings come like this. So if you're going to use a, if you're going to mount them as a pillow block, then we have two pieces. We have a, a bottom and a top like this. We assemble the pillow block like that and then there are holes for mounting the these um, frames on the board. Okay. And then if you want to mount them as a flange mount, again we have these flange mount pieces that go together like this and then you can use the same bearing as a flange mount rather than a pillow block. All right, I think that's enough now uh, on the on the kits. Okay, so here's a description of your your setup at the beginning of this lab. So what I'd like you to do then is turn in your workbook. We're on page 81. The lab is bearings, shaft, crank handle, shaft coupling. And there are a few other items in there, too. All right, so I'll just wait a minute so you can uh, open up to that page, page 81. All right, is everybody all set? All right, so this first page, 81, just gives you a, a description of what you're going to set up and then after that there's going to be some operation and some questions to answer. Okay, so you can see that the, the big square on page 81 just represents the, the mounting board. So we're going to be using a 24 inch shaft, the long shaft. Now in this lab we're only going to use one shaft. Um, one of your 24 inch shafts is a D profile. So why don't we just use that, the D profile. Uh, it's a little uh, easier to use than the other ones that are that are keyed. Okay, and you're going to use pillow two pillow block bearings and crank handle. Um, there will be a shaft coupling. Get that out, and we're going to be operating this fan. Now for the fan. When you mount the fan, you need a couple of things. You need the shaft coupling to go on the end of the 24-inch shaft, and also there's a what I would call a reducer. There's a brass part that reduces from a shaft size of a half down to a quarter, which is what you need. The, um, the fan uh, takes a, qu a quarter-inch uh, shaft size, so you'll need to use both of those parts to mount the fan. Now the other thing I want to point out, also you'll notice on this page 81 there are so, there's some guidance for how far the bearings are apart and how far the shaft is from the end of the board. Those are just rough, rough guidelines. Um, the five or six inches from the edge of the board is good because we're going to use this setup again uh, probably next week to mount an additional shaft with uh, with a bell. So this is probably a good placement for this week. Um, now in this one actually I didn't mount these bearings uh, 10 inches apart. It looks like considerably more than that. Um, it's probably better to be a little bit further apart because you're trying to su uh, provide support near the crank handle and some support uh, out near the fan as well. The other thing you want to pay attention to is because we're going to use this setup again next week for a belt, you don't want to have this the, the shaft crooked on the board. Uh, make sure that the shaft is lined up straight across the board. And it's easy to, to tell that because there are so many holes drilled in the board. You can just step back and look down along the shaft and by eyeing the holes you can see whether the shaft is, is square or not. Um, so tr try to get it as square as possible across the board. 
In other words, parallel, parallel to this edge or perpendicular to the side edges. All right. Um, the other thing that I would like you to do is, I don't know if you can see it from, from the, uh, this far away, but I have elevated the pillow blocks on the largest spacers. You do have a container in your kit which has the spacers and the L brackets. So you have these spacers. I'd like you to use the largest spacers, the 3 8 inch spacers, to elevate. And the reason is we don't really need it this week, but if we're going to use this setup again next week, um, we're going to be accommodating uh, a large pulley on this shaft. So in order for this large pulley to be able to spin freely, we need to have the shaft elevated. So we might as well just go ahead and do it now so you don't have to completely tear it all down uh, next week. All right, so once you have the setup done, then you're going to go over to the next page. The next page is a series of questions. Now also on this setup, so far on this setup, um, we don't have the, um, the set screws on the bearings are not tightened yet because uh, there's a question uh, for you before you do that. Okay. All right. And let me go ahead and put this. I can go ahead and uh, put the fan on. Let me go and stop the tape momentarily here. All right. Um, so I have the fan mounted. Um, now, one thing I forgot to mention, you can see now I've moved one of the tables away. When you, when you get ready to start this lab, we're going to have three groups. So two groups, one group can be at each of the tables in the back of the room, but you need to move the tables apart so you have free access to both sides of the table. So feel free to move the tables around. Um, the, fan, the fan is too big to turn um, over the table, so you need to have the fan over the edge. The, the fan can turn, will turn freely over the edge of the table. The crank handle is small enough that it turns freely if you have it over the table. All right, now, once you get to page 82 in the workbook, these are questions. So you can see the first two questions um, uh, relate to a specification sheet. Pages 83 and 84 are the specification sheets that came with the uh, roller bearings. So these are two questions about the roller bearings um, with that uh, pillow block mount. So you'll have to go to those pages to get the answers to those two. And then question three is a calculation. And then questions uh, four through eight, uh, four through seven, are based on your operating uh, this assembly. And then question eight is a physics question, uh, mechanical advantage of the crank handle. Okay? All right. All right, so one more comment. So you're going to be, you're eventually going to um, use the set screws on the, the bearings, but not until after you've answered um, question through question four. Now question five asks you to tighten the set screws on the bearings. Again, don't over tighten, just snug. Now you'll notice the, the bearings have two set screws, which is typical. They have two set screws. I don't know. They look like they're maybe 60 degrees apart. Um, we're only going to use one, one of the two set screws. So what you're going to do is just rotate the bearing until one of the set screws is over the top of the flat on the, on the D-profile shaft. And then you can snug that set screw. Don't tighten the other one on the round part of the shaft. All right, so now once you're done, done with part one, then part two is over on page 85. So if you can turn to page 85. All right, so on page 85, the only thing you're going to be doing then is then you're done with the fan. Let's take the fan off. 
and then we're going to put on a hoist. Now the hoist is in your container, the container that's labeled collars, couplings, and keys. So the hoist is just a, a half inch diameter brass rod, a couple inches long, has a hole in it to thread a string through it. And then what you'll do is put one of the uh, shaft collars over the end of it to contain the string so the string doesn't fall off. And then uh, this hoist will just fit right in uh, the same shaft coupling that you used uh, for the fan. And then you can let the string go down there. And then what you'll do is hang one of these half kilogram masses uh, off the end of the string. Uh, the half kilogram masses are right up inside the physics um, storage locker, so you can just go in there and get one of those. Now the, the sketch might show that you've rearranged on the board, but no, the only thing we're doing again is replacing the fan uh, with this hoist, and then you're going to operate uh, the hoist to do some lifting. And then there will be some questions for you um, over on the next page. Okay? Alright, so when you're done with the labs, I would like to have a set of the, one set of lab sheets turned in uh, for each group with all the questions answered. And then I'd like you to get into disassembly and putting everything back. Now, it won't happen every week, but in this week I think we can use a lot of our, a lot of your setup that you have right now next week. Uh, however, in order for the boards to store properly back in the corner, you do have to take a few things off. So before you put these boards away, uh, make sure you take the crank handle off, make sure you take the hoist off, but you should be able to leave everything else. I think everything else will store okay. And let's just leave it like that, and that'll make it easier to get started next week with belts. And then also make sure everything else that you have out gets put back in your kit, and the kit put back in the, in the locker. All right. Okay, so here are your lab groups. So group number one, Jeremy, Tyler, Maggie. Group number two, Jared, Jeremy, and Chen. Group number three, Brenton and Robert. So we'll keep these lab groups intact for the upcoming weeks. Now the numbers correspond to the kits, so group one, two, and three. So what I'd like you to do is in the in the locker over here in the corner, uh, the, the four kits are numbered one, two, three, four. We'll keep kit number four in reserve uh, for spares. So group number one will use kit one, group number two, kit two, group number three, kit three. And each week I'd like you to go back and just use the same kit. So if it's disorganized and things are missing, then, then it'll be your responsibility. All right, so uh, go ahead and get started. Also, for the boards over in the corner, um, those boards aren't marked or numbered, so week to week you could uh, use the, the same boards or different boards, it doesn't matter. All right, so there you go.